Hello, Killian Hill. This is Pastor Mac. I hope you're having a great start to your week. I know I am, and I'm excited to share with you devotional today. It's a devotional thought on prayer. I've been thinking about prayer lately, and specifically, I've been thinking about asking God for things, for petition. Um, it's one of the, co the common things that we do in prayer. We ask God for safety and health, especially right now. We uh, ask God to bless our food. Maybe that's more of a mundane thing, but we ask God for bigger things as well. We ask him for help in our jobs, our careers, um, ask, ask him for help in our relationships and help in our church for things to go well, for our plans to succeed. Um, we ask him for wisdom, for making the right choices. We ask God for so many things. And I've been thinking about some principles from the scripture um, concerning asking God. And I came up with just a couple, it's not comprehensive list of, of principles about asking God for things in prayer, but just a couple little principles from the scripture that have helped me recently. So let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll bring up these principles here for you to be able to see. This is just three simple thoughts about asking God for whatever. I'll go through them very quickly since it's a short devotional. Uh, but the first principle here is believe that God can answer. And I hope that asking God for things, it should be common in, in our lives. It shouldn't be so common that we sometimes forget to check and see if God is actually answering our prayers or we still even stop believing that God can answer. We just ask God for small things or stop really believing that God can do what we ask him for. James 5 says to pray for healing when someone is sick or suffering. And it's, it says that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, or the old King James says, availeth much. And we, we want to know when we pray, and when, especially when we ask God for things, it's good to keep in mind and to know that God can do anything that is consistent with his character and his plan. So pray with faith. Pray believing that God can answer. A second principle is as you pray and you ask God for things, be willing to let God use you. Uh, be willing to let, let God change you or, or maybe even use you in the answer to your prayer. Acts chapter 4 has an instance of some believers uh, getting out of, of prison and being persecuted. And they, as they pray, um, they ask God for boldness to declare the gospel. So here they're not only asking that God would uh, work powerfully in the gospel to convert people, but they're actually, along with that request for God to work, are open to the possibility and, and pleading with God to use them in the proclamation of, of the gospel as well. And uh, that's something that's, that I've noticed is important as well. When we pray and ask God for things, we should be open and receptive to him changing us in the process or using us, um, especially to accomplish his will. And here's one final principle, uh, and this is the one that I've been dwelling the most on lately. Uh, when we ask God for something, we, pr we know that he can answer anything that's consistent with his character and his plan. Um, we know that he loves to answer prayer. We know that God is always working on us and changing us. Uh, but sometimes God does not answer prayer in the way that we would like or expect. And many times, we need to uh, hold on to this third principle. We need to be willing to let go of anything else, any other request or petition that we have for God besides holding on to God himself. 2 Corinthians 12 uh, is the Apostle Paul writing a letter to the Corinthians, and he says in the course of this letter that he has a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that is, but it was something that was painful, either physically or emotionally, to Paul. It was something that frustrated his plans, that uh, stuck with him for a good portion of his life, from the sound of it. Uh, could have been a physical problem, could have been an emotional burden, 
or I've even heard some people suggest a, a people problem, an opponent that he had that uh, wouldn't leave him alone. We don't know what it was, but listen to these words in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, starting in verse 8. It says, Paul says, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this thorn in the flesh that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul prayed for all kinds of things, and undoubtedly he saw God answer his prayers and use him effectively in ministry. But in this instance, the thing that Paul prayed for, he did not get. He wanted this thorn in the flesh, this bad thing to be taken out of his life, to be he wanted to be left alone uh, from whatever this was. And God didn't answer that prayer in the way Paul wanted him to. God left this thorn in Paul's life, and uh, Paul's prayer was left unanswered. And so I know that I need that lesson in my life as well, just like Paul does, that I need, as I pray for God to do things, to take away thorns and difficult things out of my life as I uh or any number of things that I pray for, I need to be willing to let go of that request as well. Uh, we know that God's never going to let go of us, and uh, as long as we have him, it should be enough. Thank you, Killian Hill. I hope you have a great week. I love you and miss you, and hope to see you in person again sooner rather than later.